Hey guys, Rovers25 here, bringing you another quick little video. So today I am going to be doing the TRX 300 FW, mine is a 1994, uh, four-wheeler ATV front differential washer mod. So there are inside the differential little slip discs that engage and disengage both sides of the, the differential for your four-wheel drive. Uh, sometimes what happens is is that one side spins but one side doesn't we call that the like the Honda three-wheel drive mode and um, sometimes you know when you're out and you really need that extra traction being stuck in three-wheel drive mode because the discs aren't engaging all the way um, can get you stuck or can prevent you from being unstuck so this is a nice simple mod uh, that I found on the internet I've never actually used this method I just figured I'd make a video on how to put the whole thing together and do it um, because no one has made a video on really how to do this on the 300 model. There are some for like the 450 and the 500 Foremans and stuff like that, but not for the TRX 300. So what you're going to need is two of the cone washers. That's the part number I ordered. These are actually um, for the part number for the 88, 1988 uh, TRX 300 FW front differential, but they're supposed to be identical uh, parts. So there's the cone washer. I'll take them out later. Uh, other than that, you're going to need to have your differential, your front differential pulled out already. You're going to need a 14 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, and for the gears and all that stuff, you're going to need something um, called a Torx bit, and this is an E10. It's kind of hard with the lighting down here, sorry. E10 uh, Torx bit. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take out all the bolts that are actually holding the two clamshells together. So for that, you're going to go ahead take yourself an impact or whatever take a 14 and there's going to be these two on the back side for the rear shaft or the shaft that goes to the engine there's two 14 millimeters back there so we're going to go ahead and take those out real quick everything on this is already loose so this is going to be really easy for me just because I wanted to show you guys how to take this whole thing apart so just put those to the side and that's it for the 14 you're done with that so put that off to the side and then switch to your 12 millimeter and take out the remaining bolts all right take out all those bolts go ahead and put them to the side all right so now you can take the two cases and pull them apart now when you pull them apart make sure that you're careful because on the inside of the case there's either going to be on the bearing down here or for me it's right here there's this little washer don't lose that and don't get them switched so I always like to put it on the inside of the shell here and then I put it off to the side and then you can grab the whole assembly on the inside pull it out again check here it's not on here my washer is right here so I'm just gonna leave it there and then I'm gonna put this case to the side now while you have this thing apart obviously you can inspect everything else so my pinion seems to be okay it's not loose either up or down and spinning the teeth seem to be pretty okay so I'm not gonna mess with anything in here like that so now you have the internal mechanism of the differential here so these bolts what are there here six or seven one two three four five so these six bolts on the bottom side are 12 millimeter and these ones on the top are the E10 socket now I had a lot of trouble getting these E10 sockets off like an extreme amount of difficulty getting these things off because everything in here is Loctited in place I don't know if it's Loctite red or Loctite blue or whatever the heck they used in the 90s when I reinstall this I'm gonna clean it with a degreaser back there I have some super clean in the background I'm gonna degrease all the thread spots and then I'm going to Loctite blue it just to make sure that the bolts don't come out but uh, you guys can do whatever you want I know some people do red but if I ever want to take this apart I don't want to have to deal with red Loctite so I'm gonna do blue so this is the way I have taken this apart so again these are all loose so this is gonna be super easy for me but I take off the bottom 12 millimeters first so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so let me wipe my hands real quick all right so go ahead with your 12 millimeter take off the bottom ones Take your 12 millimeter bolts out, put those off to the side. There's all six of them. Put those to the side there. And now you can pull this assembly apart. And when you do pull it apart, 
just make sure that you're careful because if you're opening this thing like upside down on the bottom side here or the the big gear side your little clutch pack thing I don't know the technical term for it is gonna fall out and this is what you need to get to so here's all your friction discs and everything and here are the two here's the first two cone washers so these are actually stuck together so there's the two cone washers they go so if the if the cone is going like I'm trying to get this in line with the camera there you go so the cones going like this the cone the top side of the cone is going to go on top or you know like this right I'm gonna try to get this in frame here I'm so sorry for this crappy editing I just don't want to have to edit this video 50 times so here we go there you go so the top of the cone the high side not the curvical side is going to go up and the curvical side is going to go down so it compresses against this clutch pack so what you're going to do is take one of those cone washers from the factory and you're just going to install a third one on one side and then we're going to get to the other side and we're going to install another one so let's take these out and take a look at them yeah they're identical so the part number i gave you is good so they're identical pieces so now i have three on this side and i'm going to put the new one in the middle and kind of rub these together get a little bit of this differential oil all over these things before i stick them back together there we go make sure that there's a little bit of oil in there so now i got three of these stacked up i'm just going to set it back in there the way that it was before so now it's a little bit thicker because i have three cone washers and then you can go ahead take this put them back together really carefully make sure that the cone washers and everything aren't all caught up and it would look still just like that when you put it together however i'm going to leave it apart for right now because i'll show you another way to put it together so now for this half so now we have the upper half so i'm going to call that the lower half this is going to be called the upper half for me anyway these e10 bolts so i'm going to go ahead wipe my hands one more time we're going to switch to our e10 socket switch to that go ahead and take these off now when i took these off the first time i put this whole assembly in a in a and a uh, vise um, and I had as much pressure as I could pushing down on these E10s because I had a lot of issues with it slipping and I really did not want to strip these because I, I don't know if I can use a different type of bolt or if I'd have to buy E10 bolts I kind of wanted to switch these to standard like bolts but I'm just not going to mess with it so my recommendation is like I said this is already loose um, but when you do this the first time because these are loctited in there I would put this whole assembly in a vise get yourself an electric impact or maybe an air impact E10 socket, put it on there, and I would be pressing down as hard as I can to keep that thing on that bolt so it doesn't slip. Because even though this E10 fits, I, it doesn't slot all the way down. And I don't know if that's just because of my socket or the way that the E10 uh, socket and bolts work. I don't know, but just a piece of advice for you. So we're gonna go ahead and back these off. Let's make sure I got this on loose. Yep, I do. So there is the six E10s. Go ahead and pull that assembly off. So same thing, underside looks pretty similar to the other side. Don't lose those bolts. And here is, whoop, if I don't throw my camera around, sorry about that. Make sure I get you guys still back in frame here. Here is your friction discs right here along with the other side of the gear. So here's your friction discs right there and then here's your cone washer so again the cone washer the you know it's because this is upside down this one's going like that so the cone side goes up the high side goes down and you're going to take the other cone washer the factory one or you know however you're doing this I know that some people say you can use some uh, regular like tractor washers I'm not doing that I'm going with the factory stuff because I got a good deal on these things so I'm just gonna go ahead and rub some oil all over these things make sure that I got stuff all over so now I have three of these cone washers that I'm gonna be stacking together I'm putting the new one in the middle and there we go so now I have three of them just go ahead set those back so this is gonna be upside down set these back on there now all it is is pretty much just putting the whole thing back together and that's basically the mod so the way that I'm going to do this is because you have these little teeth here 
on the friction discs and stuff. I'm going to, and there's these slots on the, I don't know what this term is called, but the assembly, I'm just going to call it the assembly. There are these slots for the friction discs to slide in. I'm going to go ahead and put the gear, the gear with the teeth side in first, and then slide the friction discs into place the best I can with just my finger here. Of course, this never goes as easy as you would say it would go because, of course, I'm recording, so some of these get stuck. But uh, just go ahead and slide those into place. There we go. And then make sure that they sit very nicely in there. And then all it is is a matter of just reassembling the whole thing. So then you would put the top on, you would bolt that down, put the bottom half back together, bolt that down, put the whole differential back together, and then you're done. That's it for the mod. Now, the mod is supposed to make the friction discs stay engaged more because the washers are going to push the discs together a lot more. So you're going to be stuck in like four-wheel drive a lot more frequently. Now, some people say that it's a huge difference. Some people say it's not a big difference. Um, I just needed it to engage more frequently, and this was the easiest way because I didn't want to install a 100% differential lock, and this is not supposed to be a 100% differential lock. It's just supposed to engage it significantly more. So uh, that's pretty much it for the mod. I'm not going to show you guys the reassembly. Just do the video in reverse, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, the only thing I would do is make sure that when you're reassembling these, um, I would use some disc cleaner, which I'm going to go ahead and do some. I'm going to be using super clean, but you can use brake cleaner or whatever. I'm going to use some Q-tips, and I'm going to be putting Q-tips down in these little holes where the bolts go with the thread, cleaning off those thread parts, to clean off the bolts, put a little bit of blue Loctite on it, and then I'm going to assemble the whole thing with some blue Loctite to make sure that it doesn't come apart. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I know it's uh, about 12 minutes long, but I wanted to show you taking the whole thing apart, putting the pieces together, and just kind of explaining it. So sorry if it's a little bit long, but hopefully you guys found it helpful. I will catch you guys in the next video. Orbis25, signing off. Peace. Thanks for watching my video. If you like the content, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, and remember to subscribe to me on YouTube and my new library channel, where you can watch all my content on a non-YouTube platform. Also, remember to follow me on Twitter so that you can stay up to date whenever I go live or post new content. All links in the description. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.